there's issues still between the fan base and, and Kane. I struggle really to get behind him. I, I can't even look at him, to be, if I'm being perfectly honest. Hello and welcome to the very first edition of XG Battle from Sporting Life InfoGoal. Remember, you can download the Sporting Life and InfoGoal apps on iOS and Android now to get all the best football analysis, insights and expert betting tips wherever you are. Today, we're joined by Pippa Monique representing Arsenal and Flav for Spurs. We'll dive straight into it, guys. Arsenal heading to the weekend 13th, which according to our performance-based XG tables, absolutely where they should be so far. Tottenham a 7th. We've got them down in 17th based on XG. It's a home advantage, Pippa up first. So where do you think Arsenal should be, Pippa, so far? You know what? I, I agree with you. We're, we are where we're supposed to be right now, 13th. With the performances we've put in, we've scraped a couple of wins, clean sheets, which have been promising. Um, but we need more goals. We need more like convincing performances on the pitch. 13th for the start of the season, four or five games in, I'm not too angry about it. Obviously, I'm annoyed because I want Arsenal to be always near the top of the table, but it's, it's not, you know, it's not the Arsenal it once was. So, we're re, 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 rebuilding, trusting a process. So, and the same same question to you, Flav. Then. Yeah, that's that's exactly, I mean, that, that makes so much sense. The fact that we're seventh in the league, we should be 17th. Um, the, the even the wins, the three games we won at the start of the season weren't convincing. Um, three 1 0 wins on the bounce, and then two games where we got absolutely slapped. There were mitigating circumstances the, against Palace. We didn't have uh, anywhere near a first 11. We had seven key first team players out, either through COVID restrictions or, or just injury. Um, but the performances haven't been there. And the, the you know, you mentioned XG at the top of the show. That's that, we're not creating chances. We, the, we, there is a certain irony about Spurs and Arsenal going into this North London derby, which is usually full of goals and neither of us are, are creating clear chances or scoring goals. So it could go one of two ways. But um, yeah, it's, it, this is if this ends up nil-nil, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, same. And just on that point that you made there, Flav, so Tottenham on XG created the fewest amount of chances of any Premier League team yeah. this season. Yeah, how, how much of a worry is that? Yeah. It's, it is worrying because you've got Hummin Son and Harry Kane in your side. And if you can't give them opportunities to score, um, then you're literally, you're taking away your key weapon, ultimately. Our best players are, are our forwards and we're not creating chances for them. Um, although what I would say is, is that there were moments in that first arsenal against Chelsea where you could kind of see, hold on, I understand what's going on here. Nuno does have a plan. He does want us to press and attack. It's just that we, after 50, 50 minutes of doing it against easily one of the best teams in Europe, and they're very, very good, Chelsea. They're much better off the board than I thought they would. And you see stuff when you're at the game that you don't necessarily see on telly. They're so organised and it's so difficult to pull them out of shape. And we did it for, for 60 minutes. So I kind of, there were green shoots there, but the fact is, didn't create enough chances. Still a massive issue. And we, you go to football not to see a sound defence. You go to football because you want to see excited. You want to be excited. It's a, it's a, and, and we're not being excited. And I think that's why there is this very kind of glum feeling around Tottenham, despite us being seventh in the league. We'll come back to the, the point that you made about Harry Kane in, in a moment. We've got a really good feature on the Sporting Life website about just how much he has struggled so far this season. And Pippa, you mentioned about trusting the process at Arsenal. And so far, it's not been enough chances created. Well, there have been some positives last couple of games and it seems like Arteta has started to play a more of an attack-minded team. A few more chances being created for Aubameyang in particular. So is there a bit more positivity on the Arsenal side than the, than the Tottenham side going into this game? Yeah, if we're, if we're looking at creative chances alone, um, there's more positivity on our end because we've seen that we've got in our box, we've created chances. Mills Rose hit the post a couple of times. Aubameyang's had clear chances. So has Saka. Um, even Tavares against Burnley ran through the whole field and tried to take a shot on target but it didn't come off there's chances being created it's just it's still lacking in the final third there's still not players there that you'd expect to finish their chances such as Aubameyang who a couple of seasons ago you would bet your house that he's going to score in certain games um, but even when there's opportunities right in front of him they're not being finished and I feel like even though you said that chances are being created for a striker such as a Bamiang, with those balls in behind, they're not happening from the midfield at the moment. If that was happening more often than none, then a Bamiang probably would have had more goals this season. But 
there still needs to be a change there in that midfield to get someone attack minded to get that ball up and to to have chances put in the back of the net. This weekend's game specifically, then just going back to the info goal model and what we have the percentages down as is Arsenal to win at forty four percent, the draw twenty seven percent, Spurs to win at twenty nine percent. So. Good. Yeah, I'm sure it does. And how about you, Flav? Well, I don't, I don't, it's probably the same every single year, to be honest. Going to, going away at Arsenal, it's the same for Arsenal coming to Spurs. It's really difficult to win. I yeah. can think of two examples where we've won in the last 25 years. I think the, the Eunice Kapoor header, when we come back from two goals behind, and then the League Cup game. I can't think of any others that, that where we've done it. Maybe in 1993 at Highbury. Yeah. Um, so it is, I, that doesn't surprise me at all. 29% actually, you know, that's practically one in three chances so you um I, i'll take that actually and if you add the draw in as well it seems like your statistics would suggest that we were at least coming away well we have a good chance of coming away with at least one point so um yeah look i i, I understand it it doesn't really matter what's happening off the pitch and how well a team's playing and it's such a cliche but it plays out every single time we play it doesn't form does not come into this game mm-hmm. once you go into it it all yeah and especially because you've got a full stadium for the first time in in two years and i know this is about statistics and statistics are important they tell you so much but there's something about full uh stadium in north london derby if one team's on top it's so loud yeah. and uh, people make pay, you know make mistakes in in that in that sort of cauldron uh, more white lane than, than the Emirates, to be fair. But you, you understand, it's, uh, it's it's a very emotional thing playing in the North London derby. So uh, I'll, I'll take those take those stats. I, I mean, the, the, those that's chance percentage. I've got no issue with that at all. And Pippa, you sound like you're pretty happy with it. Not far off a fifty percent chance of victory. Yeah, it's almost fifty percent, and that's that's where I stand on it. It's always for me, no matter how well Arsenal could be doing in the league, it's always a fifty fifty when it comes to North London derby. So with those stats there, you know, if we're close to 50 of getting a win, most like, likely to get a draw. I, I I would even be surprised if it doesn't end nil-nil if we're carrying on the way both teams have been so far in the last three games. Because um, we just about bundled the goal against Norwich. We only got a goal from a free kick against Burnley. Same so, with us against Watford, exactly the same. So, yeah. It'll, There's it'll, some parallels there. What I would say, though, right, is that we have... Um, the, the team we started against Chelsea was perhaps our strongest side and, and two or three of those players were nowhere near match fit with another game in between, which give you know players a chance to, to get some minutes under their belt. If we start against Arsenal with a team that might look like, uh, well, we might have Ndombele, La Celso and Hoybier in midfield with Son uh, and Kane up top with one other, whoever that might be. Um, then we've got a chance of creating. We, we created chances. We were we were dangerous against Chelsea. Nothing too clear cut apart apart from one one opportunity for Reguilón. But I think you'll see a different Tottenham than you have thus far this season if we're able to play that team. If we're not, you know, and there are we pick up injuries again, and then Dombele isn't fit or whatever it might be, then yeah, it's going to be a struggle for Spurs. And just on the chance creation side of things for, for Tottenham, because we've touched on um, what Pippa was saying about Aubameyang and more, more balls being need to be played in behind for Arsenal, then only four shots for Harry Kane so far this season. Mm. Only three on target, 312 minutes. And he's only had just over 0.5 XG in total um, for the season so far. Uh what needs to change? That's got to be a huge concern. Well, uh, it's concerning thus far because there's obviously the underlying issue of what went on in the summer. Mm. Are we seeing an unmotivated Harry Kane who doesn't want to pull for Spurs anymore? Um, there's issues still between the fan base and, and Kane. I struggle really to get behind him. I, I can't even look at him, to be, if I'm being perfectly honest. I, no way. Um, he's... Um, what he did during the summer, in my opinion, are not representative of all fan bases, was unforgivable. Um, and it really wouldn't have bothered me if he left. Uh, but he's here and we, you know, he's a quality striker. And he, he's if his motivation isn't with Spurs, and it may well be, I'm just, I, who, who knows what's going on in his head. It may, it, you know, there is a combination between what Harry Kane is, um, is think, feeling and thinking and the fact that Spurs are playing so poorly. So he can't level it all on on Harry Kane, but it's difficult as a fan when he isn't playing anywhere near as good as he, he did last year for it's not to think actually, is this something about 
you not wanting to be here. And I don't, it doesn't matter how good you are. If you don't want to be at your football club, you, you, you have to have an element of dignity as a, as a fan to say, well, you, you don't belong here if you don't want to be here. Like I say, I don't want to, I'm not, I don't know what's going on in his head. And definitely the way Spurs are playing is, is, is hampering how much he can get done. But remember, we were playing counter attacking football under Jose Mourinho last year and creating much, many more chances. So it may be the system, but yeah, there's still issues with Kane. You know what? If that's how Spurs fans feel about Kane right that's, now, that's how I feel, I feel about it. That's how the majority of them feel when they can't stand to look at him. I hope now that he definitely doesn't score on Sunday because he loves to score against Arsenal. And that's the player that I'm always worried about, him and so on, of course. But yeah. Oh. Well, look, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying all Spurs fans. I'm sure there's many out there that love him and so glad. It's just my perspective. I I, I wouldn't speak for others. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, he does love a goal against Arsenal. He absolutely does. And it'll be interesting to see uh, see how he celebrates if he does score. Um, it, we're just reading micro mannerisms at the moment. But... I don't think he's motivated to score on Sunday. I think he'll just I think he'll play in defensive midfield again, like he's against Chelsea. <laughs> well, this is it. This is they keep dropping in. They're asking him to drop down into that 10. And and he did really did really well last year and Jose Mourinho with it. So it's not a, playing in that 10 he's done since his youth career. So it's not I know people are obsessed with him being a number nine because he's such a good goal scorer, but he's played 10 throughout his career and he's good enough to do that. So I don't know. I just want to see a more attacking, exciting football, whether that includes Harry Kane on the side or not. And all, all said and done, I know you guys have already hinted at it um, earlier on in, in the piece. Score prediction then um, in as few words as possible for Sunday's game. What I think it will be, one all. What I want it to be, 2-1 to Arsenal. I think it's will be really tight. I think it'll be 2-1 to Spurs. No. We'll finish with the, the Sporting Life score prediction powered by the Info Goal XG model. Won't be surprised given we've got Arsenal at 44% chance of winning. It's Arsenal 1, Tottenham 0. And remember, our Premier League score predicts is available every Thursday on sportinglife.com and on our app, predicting the scoreline in every Premier League game. Well, thanks to Pippa and Flav for joining us this week. And do keep an eye out for our best bets video ahead of this weekend's action. And for expert insight, wherever you are, download the Sporting Life app, now available on iOS and Android. <laughs>